So this is the first question. Explain the structure of C++ program. Mention the application of C++ programming language. A typical C++, C++ program would contain four sections as shown. That is, it is going to have an include section, a class declaration section, and in class declaration, inside the class you would have member function and even maybe data members and outside the class you will have the main function program. So the include file, what is the include file? In the C++ programming language, the hash include directive, it's a preprocessor basically. So at the hash include directive tells the preprocessor to insert the content of another file, the file name that you have given, insert the content of another file into the source code at that point where the include directive is found. Include directives are typically used to include the C++ header files. For C++ functions that are held outside of the current source file. So what does that mean is so the header files are to tell you, you have in, in your programs you have some functions whose the whose uh, the current source the whose details are not available basically so the details of that is available in the header file and so you insert that particular file header file in in your program so a typical declaration is going to be as below the syntax for hash direct hash include directive in the C++ language is something like this. So hash include and you will have the opening bracket, you will have the less than sign, then you will have the header file name, then you will have a greater than sign. Or you could also have it like this, include and you can, you can actually have it in between two quotes. Basically, the difference between them is whenever you have a header file which is enclosed between the uh, greater than and a, uh, less than and a greater than sign, the compiler goes and searches that file first in the include directory, direct, uh, directory where all the source files are available basically. And if you actually give um, in double code then what the compiler does is it goes and searches in your source file it will not search in the uh, C++ compiler include file uh, location it will search in your source file location and uh, for the particular file now it uh, the program the header files are enclosed in double quotes whenever when you have written the header files and you want to include that in your program. So a typical a client server model of the same how the structure is. So in a, from a client server perspective, uh, the class is working like uh, the working like a client and the main function is uh, the class is working like a server and the main function is working like a client. So the server is available and uh, for the client to use it basically. So that is the concept for this client server model of the structure. Okay, let's again understand more in more clearer details this particular files. The include file is a pre-processing directives, a line of a program which starts with hash. So all the pre Processing directives or preprocessors starts with hash. Now, hash include IO stream. If this is a command that you have written, then you are requesting the compiler to include 
the IO stream header file in your program. Now, what exactly this IO stream header file has? Like if you are using commands like C in, C out, okay, then these are the commands that, that these are the you are not written a program for C in, C out. The detail of that is available in the IO stream file. I will show you a typical uh, IO stream file so you will understand what is inside them. So here you have we have one. This is this is a I can this is this is as you see it is IO stream file basically. So what what this has is it has already included one file called O stream and I stream. You also have those O stream and I stream file and all the data details of that O stream and I stream is already included in IO stream. So if you are including IO stream, you don't have to include the O stream and I stream. So okay, other than the O stream and I stream detail, what else this is having? So you can see here, this, this particular header file is having the detail of C in, C out and C error and C log. So if at all you are using any of these commands, then you will have to include iostream.h or iostream basically include iostream. Now similarly, you can see the include sub subdirectory have header files like the include subdirectory in your compiler basically. So if you are using a GCC compiler, you would have to get to the details of the include de include subdirectory of the GCC compiler or any other compiler that you are using. So the include subdirectory of your compiler, you will have um, header files like IO stream, you will have F stream for file related uh, details, you will have string for all string related functions, then you will have set for set with like you want to you want to set the output in particular number of bits, bytes and the format in which you want to set the output. So you can use, if, if you are, want to set that format, then you will have to use set header file. And if you are using stack, then you can use a stack header file. If you are using list, then you can use list header files. If you are using queue, then you can use queue header, header files and math format functions, etc, etc. So you have all these header files in C++. You also have more than this. I've just given examples. So the next is a class declaration. So for that, first we will understand what is a class. A class is a user defined data type which has data members and member functions. The data members are the data variables and member functions are the function used to manipulate these variables. And to get together, the data member and the member function defines the property and behavior of the object in a class. Okay, we will get into more details about the class, but I'll just make you understand a little bit about it. And then next slide. So here you have a, a typical structure of a class. So a class is a class name and you, you begin with a class basically to start giving a class name. Then you give a class name and from this bracket till this end of this bracket and it ends with a semicolon, this complete is a class. So inside the class you will have an access specifier. We'll get into that in the coming modules. Then you have something called data members and member functions. The data members are something all the variables like integer, float, all the variables you will declare which you are going to use inside this class. And the member functions are one which which are going to which you are going to uh, store the value into the data member that is the variables and receive take the value and probably give it outside this class itself. So those functions are called as a member functions. So here a typical uh, definition of a member function and main function is here. 
so a member function of a class is a function that has its definition or its prototype within the class definition like any other variable it operates on any objects of the class of which it is a member and has access to all the members of the class for that object. So this data member function will have access to all the data members of that particular class. The third one is the, uh, the fourth one is basically the main function. Now a main function a C++ program is a C++ program always starts from calling from main. So it's a main function is the first programs that executes. Okay. In fact, main is the only function called automatically. So all any other function you will have to call. But this is automatically called. It automatically, it's a first program automatically executes. And the code in any other function is only executed if its functions are called from the main. So if you look at our question, okay, let's go back to our question. Explain the structure of C++ program, which you have understood. Mention the application of C++ programming language. So let us look at the application of C++ programming language. Now C++ is a versatile language for handling very large programs. It is suitable for virtually any programming tasks, including development of editors, compilers, database, communication system. You can do anything, any application, whatever C was doing, you could do, use it for everything. Since C++ allows us to create hierarchical objects, we can build special object oriented libraries which can be used later by many programs. While C++ is able to map the real world problem properly, the C part of C++ gives the language the ability to get close to machine language details. So it can do everything what the C does basically. But it is having an added feature. It, you, you can write a program which is more maintainable, more easily expandable. And that is the advantage of C++. And these are the applications that you can have like editor, compiler, database, communication system. You can write any program with the C++.